Ian, I'm Chantal and Kat. Um, so um, if you've got any questions, please just be free, feel free to ask at any time. Um, so we just want to keep it really informal, just have it as a bit of a chat, really. Um, so, uh, who wants to start? Well, I'll start, because okay. <laughs> I've made some notes. So, um, my pieces are these ones here. There's, there's a fifth piece here, which is... Uh, about to move because the drones are there. Which is, is good. That's all right. That's good. It's, it's interactive. Already. Um, but yeah, so um, this is called this piece, this combination of five pieces, uh, I call Curating the Orphaned Object. And um, I'm, uh, I'll talk about this object there a bit later on. But uh, I've collect records. We just had a good conversation for a few seconds about types of records. Um, I used to go to general sales as a kid um, with my mum and my grandma in the late 60s. So I used to go and buy toy cars and, and records. So I'd, you'd get all sorts of interesting curios at that time because it wasn't just the Beatles and the Stones, which is everybody waving things in the 60s. Or so. There was all these other bands as well. So you'd get a pile of records for like a penny or tuppence. Or, you know. And there'd be, um, in amongst the well-known stuff, there'd be all these obscure bands that were actually really good, and they were as good as the Beatles, I thought, or So, um, I, I, I kind of carried on, you know, throughout the decades, buying records, and in searching for records, I found these other strange um, objects that, you know, amongst the, to do with record collecting. So I'd find, like, record shop bags, and... Uh, that would be shops that probably maybe existed for only a couple of years, or maybe they existed for 30 years and they were really well known. Um, and I started getting fascinated by these objects that I found. And there were things like torn covers of records that were quite obscure, and they'd end up being like um, a really obscure record that was damaged or torn, or you know, just a sleeve, or just a, an LP without a cover. So, but it, it, it drew me in. I started. The thing about record collecting is that there's a value to it. When I first started collecting records, there wasn't the value like there is now. I mean, records go for thousands now. So everybody had records at that time. Yeah, well, 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 yeah. I mean, there's less, there's less stuff yeah. around as well. But there wasn't the cult of record collecting that there is now. I mean, there's a real cult of it. Um, but I don't like that thing about everything's been priced and all that sort of thing. You know, I'd be talking about um, objects I'd find and people would say, hey, how much is that worth? And it'd be like, nothing. But it, I like it. And it was about the aesthetic value of it. And then there's this thing about everything's been priced. And I was thinking, well, what about um, collecting, like anti-collecting, these objects that are worth nothing, but they mean a lot to me. So I did this, it's my... Um, my dissertations about um, about these objects I used to find, and that was the that's the cover of one of those Top of the Pops albums, and there's a sticker on it that says 25p forwards. And somebody's drawn on the cover the Naked Dog's Milk Tray, and there's this one. Um, and what is interesting is there's a cover version of um, a Rat Race by the Specials on it, which is so weird. And there's another one which is a cover version of the Sex Pistols track on it. So it turns out that these Top of the Pops albums, although they were almost worthless at one time, they're really collectible now because there's all these strange cover versions. I mean, imagine doing Johnny Rock, I'm a session singer doing Johnny Rotten's vocals, you know, so it's such a weird thing to do. So um, I got these objects that I used to find, and like, I used to find, like, you know, how you do not want to. This up. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's the date on it is the 16th of May, 1963. So that's almost exactly uh, 60 years ago to the day, isn't it? Yeah, three, four days away. So that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Um, but so inside it, there'd be, um, I find something like this inside it. And it'd be like an old photographic thing with all this writing on it, which I love stuff like this, mark making, I'm really into forensics. And then you'd look inside and you'd find um, stuff like this. These objects, um, photographs of people, look at that, God, with a, a horn, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, yeah, you can pass these around. But um, it's people's lives and what happens when people die. Quite often stuff gets just thrown to the wind. Um, you know, it kind of disappears, and those 
how many collections that meant a lot disappear. So what is it? What, do, what are these things? What's, are they going to end up in landfill? So I started thinking, well, I should grab them before they end up in landfill. And they mean value to me. They, they, and it's also a reaction to um, 40 years of rampant free enterprise market and capitalism where things are just sold and it's what things are worth. And to me, that I don't care what things are worth. Value money. I care what things are worth aesthetically. Um, so uh, it's about giving life to these objects that would end up in landfill. So is, is that like the aftermath, is it, of the, the, yeah. of their existence? And this yeah, kind of you know, because this stuff is just lying around, so it's the aftermath of it. It's flowered and fruited, and then it's fallen, and people don't want it anymore. So that's the aftermath of it. Sorry, that's, I, I, meant, I forgot to mention that that's the, the name of this exhibition, is Aftermath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not to introduce that. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a lot more I could talk about, about hauntology and things, but... These are, that's me when I was about six, and that's my grandparents, and that's my dad at my mum's birthday party. And I printed it on these bits of paper, these cardboard, that I found. That's got an address on it. I just love these colours. And as a reaction to the, the sepia and the black and whiteness of that, I've created these. Because um, a lot of the stuff I found was sepia and black and white, and just kind of like, it was quite low key. I wanted something that shouted and I got a high vibration, so that's why I started using fluorescent colours as well, because it really shouts at you. And it, it attracts your attention. Because although I want to talk about stuff, I want it to be visually interesting as well, so I want it to draw you in. So I don't want you to be able to just walk past it and I want you to give it a second look. So things to give it a second look and you kind of get into it. I mean these are car registration numbers and the values that they are, and that was in the 80s, so there's one there that's £10,000 in the 80s, that's a lot of money, isn't it? Um, so what, is thing, what are things worth? Car registration numbers, you know, they, it's a massive business now. You see them driving down the motor, I saw a load today, because they, the way they, the way they space the letters and numbers make words now, so, yes. you know. Um, but yeah, so uh, there's, there's a whole load of other decks in there. This is a uh, drawing I did, which I translated into screen prints of like kind of writhing earth, and these are roots. So it's what's going on under the, under the ground. And I'm really interested in ley lines, whether you believe it or not. But I think that things like disused railways are like the modern version of ley lines. And you've got this thing that is under the ground that you can't get rid of. It's been there for, for years. Well, that's quite exciting. So this is this, these, these bits here are like a kind of like cartography, like plotting, map, mapping and plotting, and these are like the the, um, the moments that, that happen, you know, rising up. So um, yeah, there's a lot more I can talk about than that. I'm following from what you were saying. Yeah. Because, um, I like to use furniture as medium. Because it already has a reading. Um, I, I use other objects as well. Uh, so that piece in the corner is mine, and uh, the table there, um, the red table. So um, the story behind the little red table is that um, I feel like I've had a relationship with it. So when I found it in the charity shop, uh, it became a part of the family. Um, I've got a whole lot of story about how I kind of gave it a new red coat. <laughs> so it was just sort of you know a run that it's become. Uh, it's sort of like it's been an art table. It's been um, a school table through COVID. Uh, it's been in all the different rooms. It's been in my children's rooms. It's been in the kitchen. Uh, and when I started using this as an art piece, my youngest daughter said, "Oh no, don't destroy it. Don't break it up." You know, I was like, "Oh, you know, they love that little table." You know. And so it, it, that's what you say about yeah. value, you know, yeah. to us. It's got a life. Yeah. It's a life. Yeah. Yeah. But because it came really old, it's getting rick and say, we yeah. didn't have much space, to, you know, we didn't have the use yeah. at the moment. So I thought, they transform um, into something, into a piece of artwork. So um, for me, like, um, I'm sort of late in years, um, going through menopause, my children are growing up now. So my role is, is changing. Uh, I'm, I'm having to sort of reinvent myself and become something new. And that's all to do with like old furniture and old objects. I want to, I want it to have a new life. You know, have a moment against. When it was first made, it was valued. Somebody bought it, they wanted it, they spent money yeah. on it. Yeah, it had so a value. Yeah, yeah, it had a value, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and then it gets discarded and it goes to charity shops or just left out on the street. Yeah. And so I, I just, I want to, I think that's what happens to people quite often, you know. Um, you sort of, you're valued by your children in a different kind of way when they're little, when they need you. 
and they grow up and they leave and they don't really want to spend as much time with you, you know. Um, and so you have to reinvent yourself or, or you, you just kind of end up kind of in landfill, in your own landfill, you know, you just, <laughs> your life just stops. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's basically what my work's about. Um, and yeah. yeah. it's an aftermath thing as well, isn't it? It's what comes yeah. after. Yes. That, that, um, the, yes. The moment of flowering and... and yes, yeah. The whole story is, uh, is sort of like, I think yeah, about these kind of objects. Yeah, yeah. I think about these kind of objects from like a seedling to a tree to being felled uh, and, and machined and designed and bought and it's, it's got a life, it's got a journey um, and that's what I want to highlight yeah. Yeah. So my, my background was, um, yeah, so I did uh, fine arts, fine art, fine art under the graduate degree inclusive of uh, two years of uh, industrial design um, and then I've done my art design interdisciplinary practices and I also did a furniture design and production course. So like, I think all those things have come together like in a sculptural way now. And uh, I think, yeah, that, that's, that's my passion for the moment. Yeah. So, Any questions? Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it reminds me of an Escher painting. Yeah. Is it, it was that was that an influence or was that just coincidence? No, I think you know which actually painting I'm on about. Yeah, yeah, the one with the names in the yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, no, it's just yeah. coincidence actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I yeah, know the one you mean. In fact, I thought that when I saw it, I thought yeah. of that. It's a, a print, isn't it? Yeah, it's just it's just one of the main pieces of work, but yeah. it's, it's leaves that are very similar. It's ah, kind of falling, yeah. like an object's made up of leaves, and yeah. some of it's falling well, away. It's, it's right. based on a Japanese maple, uh, so I kind of took the inspiration from a Japanese maple tree, and that's about like autumn. And I was thinking, I'm kind of like in the autumn of my life, but it's also got symbolism about you know peace and uh, yeah, um, oh, God, like a, it's got like all this symbolism behind yeah. it, you know. Yeah. Um, so I wanted it to. I was thinking like it started off as a tree. And I wanted it to kind of transform back into yeah. a tree, but mm -hmm. not what it was before, yeah. because we never transform into what we were before. So, like, even you know, people say like elderly people uh, sort of become childlike again, but they're not the same child. Do you know what I mean? They're a different kind of childlike, yeah. and that's what I wanted the table to become, not the tree it was. Yeah, that's a good point. I wanted it to become something mm -hmm. different. No, no, people don't appreciate that pieces of furniture were trees once, I don't think. Yeah. No, you really have to yeah. think about it. You really have to kind of, like, it doesn't Wood. make any sense yeah. because you just take pieces of furniture for granted as pieces of furniture. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and imagine the journey that, that, well, that the wood that it's made up of yeah. has gone to to get yeah. to your kitchen table. You know? yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's what, yeah, that's, that's what I want people to think of. Because also, if you think about it, everything, metal, everything came from the earth. And because like um, when we're made up of molecules and energy, and you can't destroy molecules, and you can't destroy uh, you can't destroy atoms, you can't destroy energy. So that means everything gets recycled. Yeah. So the molecules in that table were once part of an animal, um, other plants, yeah. uh, another person. Do you know what I mean? So I think when you have a connection with an object, any object, maybe there's something in that relationship yeah. that's beyond just yeah. it being a physical piece. Of Maybe there's a, a molecular thing. I've got things in my home that I absolutely adore that are battered little bits of furniture. And then I get a beautiful piece of furniture that I can quite happily give away. You know what I mean? Because there's something else yeah. that's connected me to a piece. I think if people start thinking about objects, I think it's in, is it in the Quran where they talk about um, objects sort of um, being able to communicate more. So it's something like that. Something yeah. About that time. I don't know whether it is, but I think um, the thing about the Quran and the Bible and is that a lot of the same concepts are in there, yeah, and it's to do yeah. with um, the turning off life. Yeah, you yeah. know, um, different people interpret it in different yeah. ways. But, I mean, like that, I've got an LP which is an investigation into reincarnation, and it's mm -hmm. the guy who hypnotizes somebody and takes it back through their sort of previous life. And, and there's, there's a 40 year period in between and dying and being born again. And he, he's, the guy says, well, what happens? And uh, the, the, the woman says, um, I carried on in another way. And he said, but what, what happened? And she says, something wonderful. So that's really interesting because when you die, 
you carry on in another way and something wonderful happens. So potentially something even better than now yeah. happens after you die. I'm not saying you commit suicide, but well, there's well, so much, yeah. you know, it's not the end. Well, when Things it's carry like on. Well, it's like 70% water. Yeah. You know, so like once that table um, um, de degrades, it, becomes, it goes into the soil, it becomes water, we yeah. drink it, and it becomes a part of us. Yeah. And we create new life. You know, so maybe some of the molecules in that table one day will be part of a person. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, if you, can, if you can have positive energy in something, then I think you're spreading positive energy around, you know, spending that, that well, yeah. that, that, um, what do you call it now? It's a film, but it's like a knock on effect. It, it's a, Oh, well, this, I mean, I was that's thinking that's ripples, ripples, yes. ripples yeah, yeah, going yeah, out, yeah, I mean, yeah. and, and um, <clears throat> positive energy you send out comes back yes. to you, but it also goes out and it affects other people. Yeah. And I think yeah. the way you live your life is the way that it, is the way that you pass yeah. that energy on. In the way, I think you can pass that energy on through making art, creativity, yes. and music, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and, and, yeah, and living your life though ultimately, because. Who's, how many times have you been with somebody and they're like, they really, they really just suck the life out of you? You know? <laughs> and, and that's not how to live your life. The way to live your life is to pass that energy on and also try and leave people better than when you found them yes. in the way, like more up. And objects. Yeah, and that's what hopefully this does because we can talk and talk and talk and having to learn language and English and French and Chinese. You know, you have to, but when you do a piece of a creative thing, it's an immediate thing, and people respond to it. Immediately. You it beyond yeah, you don't need to learn the language, it's another sort of language, it's an immediate thing, and you know if you like it or not. But anyway. So, I'm trying to think how we can, like, no, create just, a journey just, just ourselves. Don't, I don't, I don't try and link like, it. Just, I just can't help linking it. So, even if it's talking about objects, and Chantel was talking about nature, and I guess that links are over there, aren't to mind, so... Um, so mine is about nature, I suppose nature is the starting point. So mine are, are the three digital prints on the wall there. Um, they are in sort of staring at the sky, lying in the clovers, and wading in the water. And to sort of start where they were originated was, uh, speaking of aftermath, um, I loved doing the daily walk. I, it, it was a time of extreme anxiety for me, but the daily walk for me was it was a real sense of, of solace and after that I wanted to sort of keep it going but as I'm sure we've all found it like somehow we started but we have even less time than we had before somehow so it's even harder to build that into our lives even though it was it made such a profound difference at the time for sort of connecting with our local green space and um, so uh, I sort of, it's, this started off as an installation film um, and the idea was it was an illusion of nature so it was very immersive, it had sound, it was like in a cave. Obviously I knew I couldn't make the installation here so um, I've taken stills from the film uh, but in a way it's given me ideas how I can carry it on because I'm even, we're even further from the origin of the nature where it was recorded. Yeah. Um, so the installation I made that was faux nature had a sort of, I guess it had sort of two ways you could interpret it. It was really, I tried to make it really beautiful and really sort of intoxicating, like nature can be, but also it wasn't real. And I wanted to highlight the dangers of the digital and how we can, we can record these things digitally, we can experience them digitally, but they're not going out and experiencing it for real. Um, so as my work progresses and I, I make these almost um, uh, facsimiles of my work, it's going to become further and further away from the original staring at the sky, lying in the clovers. Quite elemental as well, isn't it? Because it, there's, there's earth, water and air there. Yeah, I didn't actually consciously do that, but that's quite yeah. interesting. You just need, some, you need a fourth one that's fine. Um, but, the sun. Yeah. But that, you know, the, those experiences were experiences I had in my local area that I just cherish so much and I want to get back to more and I can't and I feel like the distance is further and further and further. So. But you've also manifested the digital into something physical again. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. even though in the one way it's getting further away, it's actually coming back again in a little yeah. bit because it's actually a physical thing now. Yes. 
And, I, and I, I'm interested now in what I can now do with these prints. Like, could I paint from them? Um, or paint on them? Or paint on yeah. them, yeah, yeah. layering. Um, the next stage on from them. Yeah. 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 But if anyone's it's interested involved. in seeing the original film, there's a QR code and you can scan mm -hmm. it and you can watch the film. I suggest it's meant to be immersive, so uh, watch it somewhere relaxing <laughs> and dark. And you're meant to sort of get absorbed into it and lose yourself a bit. But the message is kind of when was the last time you laid in clovers, stared at the sky, waiting for the water to you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was going to ask how you got the effects. So, um, obviously, they don't look like that in their original form when I, mm. when I sort of filmed. It's, it's like it. a kaleidoscope, isn't it? But I, I tried to um, disorientate the viewer, so I was trying to deterritorialise what we're looking at. So I wanted it to sort of look like the sky, look like grass, but also abstract it quite a lot. Um, to sort of place you in a, a new way of appreciating it, so maybe appreciate looking at nature in a different way. Um, so I, I sort of filtered it on Premiere, on Adobe, added lots of wacky colours. <laughs> um, you can make it hyper real, but when you get out in nature, it's even more. Ex exactly, and that's kind of, I, want, I made it as beautiful and as intoxicating as I could, but it's still not. Not yeah. there when you, not the experience. Yeah, and the idea is it is, Dead. Yeah. It's a it's dead. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hopefully my work will encourage people to reengage with their local group space. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and um, when they would like to... Yeah, yeah, so hi, I'm Wendy, I'm from China. And this is my, this is my project. Uh, my project is the memory of my grandmother, who passed away from cancer. So uh, you can see, you can see in the, uh, you can see this uh, message. Um, I think emotions is a well uh, internal and uh, invisible. But I think, but I think artificial intelligence is uh, relations. Uh, the most caused like image in a program in a, uh, in a Mercedes. So I make this uh, the watch uh, mosaic like digital patterns. So um, so you can see. Is it a knitting pattern? Yeah, knitting like pattern. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I I read some uh, I read some stories and the patterns with my with my grandmother. Yes. And I have uh, I have read some you know, stories with my grandmother. So this is like the aftermath yeah. of your relationship with your grandmother and yeah. how to remember her yeah. through patterns. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. This is a um, garden <laughs> in the China. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. And my grandmother. You want to show everybody? Uh, friend, and then grandmother uh, gave me the. Uh, she needed the. Uh, she needed the jumper. Yes. 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 So, did you take this pattern from that jumper? Did you take. Uh, where, where did the pattern come from? Uh, what, what, what? How, how did you think of the pattern? Where did it come from? Um, so, it, it is, uh, so, is it from your yeah. grandmother's clothes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's part of your um, piece, so people can look through that book yeah. and, and it relates to the three pieces there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's okay for people to look through yeah. the work. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> no, we don't buy robots. What's about the, the painting on the wall beside, beside it? What's the pattern? Is, is it a specific scenario or a story? Um, it's about my grandmother. You know, this is uh, my uh, my set. Yes. Yeah. Um, I because I think most, uh, because I think AI is a very uh, rational, is a very rational. So I am it. Uh, I mean that that smaller. Smaller. Oh, uh, I. This is this is the possible. Thank you very much, I did. Have you got any questions for Wendy? 